Hi guys and welcome to this video on changing the subject of a formula. So by the end of this video you should be able to work with inverse operations and change the subject of a formula using these inverse operations. Right, all formula that we have seen before have had a specific purpose to them. So for example we had the area of a triangle rule. Looked like that. A equals a half A B sine C. So the purpose of that the formula was to find the area of a triangle. We then have the circumference of a circle. Again, it has a purpose. Its purpose was to find the circumference of a circle. So it was C equals pi D. Same as the cosine rule. We use the cosine rule to work with triangles to find the length of a side over the size of an angle. Its purpose here was to find the value of one of its sides squared. Okay, so each of the formula have a purpose. This purpose is what we call the subject of the formula. So if we look at the area of a triangle rule, this value here, A, that is the subject of the formula. Same goes for C equals pi D, C is a subject. And the cosine rule, A squared is a subject. What we're looking to do is to rearrange these formula so that one of the other parts of the formula are now the subject. So for example, if we take the circumference of a circle, we want to change the subject of that to find the diameter instead of the circumference. Okay, so pause the video just now and copy this into your notes, Jotter. Okay, so change the subject of a formula. These are the steps that we need to follow. So the first thing we need to do is to identify the variable that we actually want as the subject. So, when we've done that, we need to apply inverse operations to make this variable the subject. So the inverse operations that we're dealing with are shown in the table here. So if your operation that is in your formula at the minute is an addition, it's inverse operation, so the one that undoes that is a subtraction. Vice versa, if you have a subtraction at the minute, you need to undo that by adding. If you have a multiplication, we undo that by dividing. And if we have a division, we undo that by multiplying. So these are the four operations that you will have seen since primary school. Okay, so you need to be aware that they have inverses, and that's one that undoes the one that you've got there already. So again, if you can pause the video just now and copy this into your notes, Jotter. Okay, here is example number one. So we have y equals x plus four, that's the formula, and we're looking to change the subject to x. So if we identify the variable that we have at the minute, we can see here that y is a subject of the formula. That's not what we want the subject anymore to be. We now want it to be x. So round about that x, we've got a plus four. So this term here. We want to get rid of that so that x is on its own. So we need to undo that. So think about the inverse operations. We've got a plus 4. To undo a plus 4, we have to take away 4. Because we're dealing with an equation here, we need to do that to both sides to keep it balanced. So what we're going to be left with here is that the 4 and negative 4 will cancel off. We'll have y minus 4 on this side and just x on that side. Okay, we can flip the whole thing around so that it says x equal to y minus 4. And you can now clearly see that x is the subject of that formula. Same goes for example 2. This time we have y equals to x divided by b. And again, we're looking to change the subject to x. So x is here. Round about that x, we have a divide by b. So to undo a divide by b, we have to multiply by b. Again, on both sides, because it needs to stay equals. If we multiply y by b, we're just going to be left with a y b term. On the right hand side, if we multiply something over b by b, the b's will cancel off, and we're just going to be left with x. So again, you can see x is on its own, so x is now the subject of that formula. And example number three. So this time we've got two things to deal with. So we're looking to get t as a subject of the formula. So that's this term here. So what that on its own. So the first thing that's happening to t here is we've got a multiplication by 5. After we multiply it by 5, we then have a takeaway 2. What we want to do is to undo both of these. Okay, and we always start off with the thing that's furthest away from the x, or the t. Um, that's this, the negative 2. So to undo a negative 2, we need to add 2. So to both sides of the equation, we're going to add 2. If we add 2 to both sides here, we'll get an x plus 2, 
equals to 5t. Those twos will disappear. That's that first thing done. We now need to deal with this times by 5. So it's a multiplication, so to undo a multiplication we need to divide. So we're going to divide both sides by 5. If we divide 5t by 5, we're just going to be left with t. On the other side, we're dividing both the x and the plus 2 by 5, so it's that full term. So we simply write that as a fraction. x plus 2 all over 5. Again, we can flip it round to get t equals to x plus 2 over 5. And there we can see that t is now the subject of that formula. And example number 4. So again, slightly different. We have m equals to 11n over 5, and we're looking to change the subject to n. So n's here. So the first thing that's happening to n is we have a multiplication by 11. So right next to it. After that, we're then dividing it by 5. Okay, again, we want to undo these things by applying our inverse operations. So we're going to start off with the thing that's furthest away, and that's the divide by 5. And to undo a divide by 5, we times by 5. So again, on both sides of this equation, we're going to multiply by 5. So 5 lots of m give us 5m. On the right-hand side, if we multiply something divided by 5 by 5, they're just going to cancel, and they leave us with the 11m. Done. Now undo the multiplication by 11. But we know to undo a multiplication, we need to divide. So we're dividing by 11 on both sides here. So if we divide both sides by 11, the 11n over 11 is just going to leave us with 1n. That's exactly what we want. But on the other side, again, we're going to be left with a fraction. So we get 5m all over 11. And the same as before, we can flip this round. So we get a final answer of n equals to 5m over 11. What you should notice here is that the fractions actually flips, up, flips upside down when it comes over to the other side. Okay? Okay, and example number 5. Again, a wee bit different. So v equals u plus a t, and we want to get t as the subject. So let's identify that variable, there it is there. So the first thing that's been applied to that t at the minute is a multiplication by a. Then we're adding it to u, so we've got a plus u. So to undo that add u, we need to take away u. So from both sides of the equation, we want to take away u. If we take u away from v, we're going to be left with an expression v minus u. If we take away from the u, that's going to disappear from that side, and we'll be left with a t. So that's that first part done. We're now looking to undo the multiplication by a. Well, to undo the multiplication, again, we need to divide. So we're going to divide both sides by a. So on both sides, we'll divide this by a. If we divide a t by a, again, those a's will cancel and leave us with the t on its own. And on the other side, we have b minus u all over a. Okay, again, we can flip it round to get a final answer for t. So t equals to b minus u all over a. Okay, last example in this video then. So we have the formula i equals prt over 100, and we're looking to change the formula to r. So again, we're going to identify the variable that we want. That's this one in the middle here. So if we think about what's actually happening to that variable at the minute. So the first thing that's happening is we're multiplying by p, and we're also multiplying by t or pt. After that multiplication, we then have a division by 100. So it's those two things that we want to undo. So to undo the, the division by 100, we need to multiply by 100. So on both sides, we will multiply by 100. Again, if you multiply the right-hand side by 100, they will cancel off and leave us with PRT. On the other side, we have 100 lots of i. So that's that first thing done. Now to undo the multiplication by pt. Well, again, it's a multiplication, so to undo that, we want to divide. So we're to make both sides by pt. Again, on the right-hand side, 
dividing by PT will cancel off the P and T that's already there, and that will leave us with just R on its own. And on the other side, we've got 100i over PT. Again, it gets left as a fraction. Okay, and again, we can flip that round so that R is at the left-hand side. And we've changed the subject of that formula to R. Okay, here are some questions for you to try on your own before you attend your class. So if you can pause the video just now and have a go at these questions, making sure you change to the correct variable. So think about applying the correct inverse operations. Your teacher will then go over these in class with you.